Alright, back again, Luke here. And today, what I thought we could do is take a look at this guy here. This is a Neo Geo CD power supply. Now, the main reason why I thought I'd make this video is I was looking through my comments on one of my last videos, and someone had made a comment about their Neo Geo CD not powering on. There was no power going to it. And I have actually experienced that problem in the past, and I figured out a way to kind of rectify that problem. And instead of trying to type it all out, which I did, <laughs> but I thought a video would make it a little bit easier for everyone else to uh, see and understand what I'm talking about here with this. Now, what he had actually said is that he tried to power on his Neo Geo CD. It didn't power on. He thought it was the PSU or the power supply, but uh, he didn't know what to do. He didn't want to try and get a new one, so uh, he wanted to know how he could test it. So today we'll take a look at that and we'll try and tell you some different ways you can go about testing it as well as some simple things you can do at home to try and get it running if you take a look at the bottom of this power supply here you'll notice that it has three prongs on it we have a plus five a ground and a plus ten volt and on the end where our adapter is this plugs into three pins on the Neo Geo CD if we take a look at the back of the Neo Geo CD right in here you can see the three prongs it plugs into now what happens over time is these three holes here become quite loose uh, after putting it in um, sometimes if it gets knocked around if you have it in a cabinet or something and you remove the power supply cable and uh, insert it a few dozen times what happens is the inside of these holes actually becomes quite loose and eventually it'll stop making contact so one day when you go to plug in the cable and turn on your machine you get no power and you think okay what's wrong with it what is going on you know even after wiggling the cable sometimes it doesn't work and uh, it's not necessarily a problem with the machine it doesn't mean that the power supply is bad it just means that you're not getting good contact here so one thing that I recommend you do first is using a multimeter if uh, those of you out there are not familiar with a multimeter a multimeter here is responsible for doing uh, tests on various different things. It can check the continuity of something if something's making a connection, checking the voltages, uh, checking uh, the resistance of things. Really has a multi-function, hence the name multimeter. But what we're going to do today is we're going to first try and test to make sure that it has power. Now, if you don't have a multimeter, don't worry. Not the end of the world. If you have a multimeter and you don't know how to use it, don't worry. It's not the end of the world here. This is something also that you can do without a multimeter. But just to do some of these tests beforehand, uh, it'll kind of help out a little bit. So the first thing that we're going to do is we'll put this up here. And we'll plug in our power supply. And we'll turn on the power. Make sure that we have power going to it. And we'll put the old multimeter down here so you guys can see for yourself. Hopefully be able to see that. And what we're going to do is we're going to test the voltages here and make sure that we're getting correct voltages for our power supply. Now at the very top here this will be our plus 5, our ground, and our plus 10. So first off we'll put the positive node in here put the negative one in here and as you can see at the very top we're getting 5.75 volts so the 5 volt line is good now one thing you want to make sure that you do when you're doing this make sure that you do not let these two pins touch if you do you're gonna short out your power supply or you're gonna pop the circuit breaker in your house so don't do that uh, make sure you keep them far away from each other the next one what we're gonna do is test our 10 volt line whoops let's see try and move this around here Test our 10 volt line, and we're getting 9.73 volts, so that's working out okay. So now we know that our power supply is working correctly. There's no problems with the power supply. What this is going to be then is it's going to be a matter of the inside of this hole, or these holes here, being slightly corroded and or being loose or even a combination of both um, and what we're going to do here first is we're going to try to clean out the inside now i know this is common sense but make 100 percent sure that you disconnect the power supply before doing this you don't want to electrocute yourself you don't want to cause any trouble any burning down the house anything like that so the next thing what we're going to do is as you can see here i have a very fine drill bit you can use a pair of um I, what is it like eyeglass repair kit um, screwdrivers or anything really thin what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to scrape away the inside of this 
uh, this copper here because what happens is that will oxidize over time and by using something like this what you can do is kind of like you know cleaning cleaning your ear I suppose you know just try and scrape away anything any residue that's on the inside here you know you don't have to get it a hundred percent clean you just want to scrape away a little bit to make a better contact All right, so this is going to give us a much better contact. In some cases, if you look at the ends of these, they might actually be green. I've had a couple of them in the past where they were extremely just green. And I thought, wow, that's really, really rough. But, okay, so flathead screwdrivers, like very small flathead eyeglass repair screwdrivers work really nicely with these. All right, so uh, you probably can't see very much of a difference there, but what we've done is we've kind of gone around the inside and we've made that a little bit uh, cleaner. Now the next part here, this is the part where some people will cringe. Uh, some people will say, don't do that, don't ever do that. I promise you it does work, you just have to be very careful with it. Next thing what we're going to do is using a pair of vice grips or a pair of pliers, what we're going to do is try to crimp down these holes to make them a little bit more snug. Now this sounds much easier than it really is, and in all actuality, it, uh, it, yeah, it's a, it's a bit challenging, but what we're going to do is we're going to slightly crimp the sides here. Now it probably doesn't look like much, but if you look at this hole here, you can see that it's crimped just a little bit. We're also going to try to remove the uh, the pliers here. We're going to do the other hole. Try to slightly crimp that as well. And you can see now that that has a little bit of a crimp on it. And go, go around it, make sure that each one has a bit of a crimp. Now, with this here, this is going to kind of distort the uh, the inside of this hole a little bit. If it gets crimped too much, if you do this too much, it won't fit back in. So you can use your uh, screwdriver, you can use your pliers here, and you can kind of widen it out just a little bit. Now, now that we have that all nice and uh, snug around there, what we're going to do is we're going to put this back on the end here. And you'll probably notice that this will be much, much tighter. It'll be uh, very, very, in some cases it might be a little bit difficult to get on, but um, let's see, I'll try and zoom in here to the back of our system. And then in the back here, if it doesn't go on the first time, it's not a big deal. You can always try and widen these holes a little bit, but make sure that you have the right side up. And oh yeah, that's much, much more snug. So as you can see there, that's going to hold it in place a lot better. And when you go to plug this thing back in and plug your power back in, if you're lucky enough, and you have everything right, you know, you've tested out that and your Neo Geo CD hasn't been left out in some bad weather conditions or anything like that. When you go to plug this thing in and power it back on, you should get your Neo Geo CD working again. So I just thought I'd share this with you guys here for right now. And uh, yeah, that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon. So thanks for watching. Good Neo Geo City.